for the camera? Are we going for the million next year? Yes. And I say, that with, hesi- said it. <laughs> I say that with hesitation because I would have never imagined that, let alone the six figures. Because the goal was 100000 <laughs> And once I got past 100000 I was like, okay, then the goal, all right, we got past one hundred, we got to 150 then we got to 200 and she's like, yeah, we got to go for uh, 250 I was like, now a quarter of a million. Like, that just sounds better right, to me. Right. Like, so we got that. And I was like, dang, so we passed that. So now, like, we just keep going yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so Donnie, give me a mic check. It's Donnie in the building oh in the first God. of the morn. I'm coming in and I didn't eat cream corn. Jared's in the middle and Dave's on the end. We about to talk about how we win, win, win. Donald, Donald, please keep that. <laughs> please keep that and put that in the podcast. I've been the forgetting we were recording. The, the people need to hear that, okay? Let's just get started, man. Walk into the social proof <laughs> podcast. <Yes. laughs> you better not Donnie, use stay my with the bars. Style. There's no way we're Aren't editing that out. The, uh, like a singing group? Or I song? was in a girl group. Now, 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 I was a rapper rapper, okay? Y'all are not going to play my skills. However, I am in my early 40s, and, you know, things have changed, so. Mm, for sure. Actually, we're going to stay on so we can see your face, brother. All right, so, man, we, I, I, I'm, I'm really excited about uh, y'all listening to this podcast. Um, Shouts out to the love. Thanks for everybody that's uh, DMing myself and Donnie. Just saying, you know, this is changing my life. This is dope. I mean, we we appreciate all the comments. Y'all left Donnie alone. Y'all did. Oh, my God. Finally. (laughs) Y'all have left me alone. Thank you, guys. I I was actually feeding off of the hate. They hated that I was a part of this podcast. Like, his audience on YouTube was like, where'd she come from? What kind of contract did y'all sign? What do you owe her? (laughs) I guess maybe I have a different, I had a different perspective because because I've been working with you, so. Yeah, they thought I was trash. (laughs) (laughs) But no, it was it was funny and it was inspiration. And some of the some of the comments made me better. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, it's it's good. It's good feedback to know what what the audience thinks about the podcast, how we want to do it. And I'm looking at kind of like the analytics um, on. I think they want us to jump into the podcast a little sooner. So we're going to jump into the podcast. I think we should. I don't think they care about our week or anything like that. I don't think they care how we were this week. But just for the record, I had an amazing week. Yo, there's, bro, there's, I don't know. There's one fly that just be around. It lives here. It be around. (laughs) It's always here. Yo, it's crazy. So, um, yeah, so don't ignore our buddy. Um, So let's just jump into it, man. Uh, We have a very special guest today that I just met this morning. Mm -hmm. But your story is super inspirational. And um, how Donnie took you from, <laughs> yo, Donnie, Donnie should just bring on all our clients. You know what I'm saying? And then if you work with her, it's like, yo, this is my proof. So my clients be you super being, lit. Can't be mad. Listen, can't be mad at it. complete your thought. Your thought though. What were you about to say? <laughs> continue to sing my praises. Con- con- continue. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just listening over here. Now, but, uh, Donnie's just an amazing coach. So to be able to have someone come on and then. Um, and you know, kind of see what it, uh, uh, what success takes, and how it includes a mentor. And actually, you were telling a story. Tell me the story on how you met Dad. Oh my God! Tell me that. <laughs> okay, so what really happened was, <laughs> I met, I found you through ET. Mm-hmm. That's why I found you. And then I think it was Dorito Days. Maybe that's what caught my eye. And I started mm-hmm. watching a lot of your videos. And for some reason, you just, you know, some people just resonate with you and it's feel like they're talking to you. So I was like, you were that person for me. Uh-huh. I kept following and watching and you posted on Instagram one day, like I'm taking like maybe five clients or something like that. And I was like, okay, let me, I've never had a coach before. I don't really know what it means, but I feel like I should do this. I'm trying to grow my business. Mm-hmm. Um, so I shot you a DM. You're like, yeah, uh, I don't have any spots available. Then you asked me some, it was some weird question. It was like, are where are you from? Or it's like, are you a guy or something like something weird? I can't remember. You do that. qualify ask men or women. Guy. Yeah, yeah it's so you, weird, weird. You only send men to one person and women That's what to it me. Was. Not necessarily. Not anymore. But you used because he's a guy and I sent them to you. What was the question? We gotta find it. Let's find the question. Let's find the question. Because <laughs> first off, I don't ask weird questions. You know what I'm <laughs> They're always very intentional. And well, I hope it's not weird when you actually read it. Always but, a um, purposeful question. Oh yes, yeah, it's, it's purposeful. There, there's a particular reason, I'm sure. Um, so you actually found me and started watching my content on Instagram mm-hmm. at Sleep Is For Suckers if they want to enjoy that as well. And yo, in all honesty, okay. so some people say, um, yo, I got five slots left or 10 slots left, they'll really take everybody. Mm-hmm. But when I'm done, 
I'm done. Yeah. So if y'all ever see me post, y'all, I'm going to take a couple clients. I mean it. It's not a, a fear of missing out type thing. So did you find it? Yeah. So, okay, so I, I asked the question, it was, or who's in your starting five for individual or group coaching? I guess I was just trying to figure out who mm -hmm. I was, like, who should I talk to? I was told you about the business. And you're like, well, where do you live? And are you a guy or girl? <laughs> okay. That's a Tallahassee male. Uh, I was like, I could help, but I'm not taking any clients at the moment. But I would have someone that gets results from her clients as well. Let me reach out to her to see if we can get a conversation. And that's how we started. You sent me uh, Donnie's IG handle, and uh, we took it from there. Hmm. Okay. I wonder why I asked that question. I what know. was going through my mind? But when you referred her, I was like, okay, well, if he thought enough of her to refer, I was like, let's do it. So. Yeah. I don't know why I asked that question. I think maybe, um, I don't know why I asked that question. Hmm, interesting. But I know at one out. time you used to only send me female clients. So at, maybe at that time you were sending guys somewhere else. Because at one time, remember we You're had right. to have a conversation yep. that you thought that I only coached women. Yes. Yeah, so that's yes. probably why you asked him that. Was that in the same converse, like in the same time frame where I said, a guy or girl, did I reply right back yeah. with, here's Donnie? Yeah. Well, no, there was, hey, what did you say? Because, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think you were, because it seemed like you were doing, like, more women at some point. Early in my career, yeah. I did women. And that's because, so early in my career, I did who did me, right? right. I was for who was for me. Right. But then it started to transition, and... Uh, men started to, it's really weird. You know, it's, mm. it's that, that thing that happens between men and women, like right. a man taking guidance or counsel from a woman. Right, right. There has to, it, it has to be a really particular type of confident man. Yeah, yeah. got you, got who you. does that. Yeah, it was, it was all within a, a day. Okay, yeah, I probably thought about it. I was like, uh. You probably texted me. Donnie. Yeah, oh, I might have texted you. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, Donnie, you working <laughs> with guys out here in these streets? <laughs> Yeah, so that 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 is awesome. So you um, you found me, then you know we um, kind of gave you my my backup. You know, say you caught the yeah. <laughs> you and it was funny too because when, when you sent me her uh, her IG, I think at that time you had you had like your forty thousand or something. I was like, she's not gonna see my DM. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I had a lot before of before you got hacked. Before, before you got, I got yeah. hacked. Oh, yeah. So uh, so what what got you to the point where you're saying I need a coach? It is an interesting conversation, right? For the person who they're trying to figure it out, but that one thing that's missing a lot of times is coaching. So where did you get the idea, you know, I need a coach? Um, so it was probably like three or four years ago. I went to uh, self-development. You know, it's kind of be like a popular thing right now. Um, but I was like, self-development, put the time in to learn more things for yourself where you can grow. So I went to a conference. That was my first big investment. I went to, a, I say big investment, but not really that big. How much uh, was it? It was $300. But... <laughs> It was in Vegas, so it's kind of like a trip too. Mm -hmm. So, and I brought one of my boys. Yeah. Right. Um, so it was, it was a conference called Thrive, I believe is the name of it. And the reason I went was because ET was speaking. Um, there's another guy, Charlie. There are a couple guys that were speaking there that I've been following. I was like, it'd be cool. They're all in one spot. Like I gotta go to mm -hmm. it, right? And it's in Vegas. I gotta go. Um, so then, just sitting in that those rooms and listening to the conversation they were having, I was like, they're always talking about coaching or have somebody hold you accountable this and that, and I was like, okay, if I don't have that, like, I can hold myself accountable, but when I go to talk about the business stuff, some people just don't understand. They don't understand where I'm coming from. Like, I have an idea, and there's like, yeah, sounds good, but I can't really go into detail with the idea, because they're just gonna be like, hey, I don't know if that's gonna work or not. So mm -hmm. I don't feel comfortable telling them everything, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's why I thought about self-development. It's like, and I keep seeing a lot of the successful people have coaches, and they keep talking about coaching, and have somebody hold your hand through the process or bounce ideas off of. And um, I was like, well, I'm not doing that right now, so mm -hmm. let's try it. I didn't know how much coaching costs. I mm -hmm. didn't know anything. I literally was like, okay, if I want to grow. Like, let me just try it. I'm one of those people that I like to just jump in and, you know, try new things and say I did it and not be like, well, what if, what if I don't so do it. So where were you in your business where you started to make this decision? I had just opened our the storefront. Um, so the first year in the storefront, so I already had my the mobile business going for uh, four years already, but again, the growth. So stepping into something that I didn't really know of, mm -hmm. and I was like, I definitely wanna have a coach um, to you know, just guide me through that process or to give me some ideas, because they've been there. Yeah. Um, so always, you always talk about, um, don't talk to somebody who hasn't been there already, and you can skip some steps. 100%. So, um, that was a big thing for what me. What was your impression of him when when he called. Honestly, when Jared and I first talked, so for, 
for reference, we've been working together for a little over a year at this point. Um, when Jared and I first talked, the first thing I asked him about his business was like, wait, people really buying? Because we, we started working together like right going into the winter. And I'm like, so what's your plan for the winter? And he's like, working. And I'm like, people really out here buying ice in the winter? Mm. I didn't get it. And so he was telling me Jared has this. Um, it's not just snowballs. It's Yeah, I'm sorry. We didn't even introduce. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Introduce oh. yourself and what you do, first off. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm Jared. Um, born and raised Give them your first and last name because they're going to be looking. Got you. Jared Malloy. Um, born and raised in Tallahassee, You better Florida. be coaching them in the midst. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're going to be looking. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Born in Tallahassee, Florida. Um, I attended Southern University. Um, I was fortunate to have a baseball scholarship out there, so that's how I ended up at Southern. Um, and from there, you know, that's where I learned about snowballs. Um, I had some teammates that would always want to go to the snowball stand at the end of practice. I was like, nah, like, let's get a Gatorade. Like, it's like shaved ice, yeah, right? Yeah, because in my head, I'm thinking snow cones, like the crunchy, you know, the blue and the red flavor. That's what I'm thinking of. And they ask me this, like, every single day. And they're all they're from Louisiana. What's the difference between a small snowball and a snow cone? What's the, what's the difference? So it's the texture, the texture of the ice. Um, a snow cone is what everybody's accustomed to, like the machines you can go to at the fair. Um, so they have like a, a machine that crushes the ice. So it's real, and this, when you pour the syrup, it goes straight down to the bottom. Mm. You know? So that's the difference there. Uh, where shaved ice or snowballs, it's finely shaven ice. So it's really like it's snowing outside. You pick up some snow and pour the syrup on it. And it should, the syrup should go through the whole snowball. So every scoop you take should have flavor on it if gotcha. it's done correctly. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I'm originally from New Orleans, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I know the craze behind snow cones and snowballs and things like that. But I had never, I left New Orleans at an early age. So I never got to see, um, so I, I thought I had it. I oh, thought I had it. Could I never, I never tasted, uh, you know, like he does an Oreo flavor snowball. And all I'm thinking mm. is Oreos on ice or, or stuffed cheesecake. But these people go crazy. So I can't wait. I wish you, this is Jared and I's first time meeting in person. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Last wow. night when he got here, when he arrived, wow. this was our first time meeting in person, but I just didn't get the concept. And I still tell you, I'm, I'm like, I still don't really get the craze about cheesecake inside of a snowball. But he makes he puts these pictures on the Internet that it's like, I got to have one. Like, I, I have to try one. And they're so delicious. What, Are you what's going your Instagram? To this Instagram? Yeah. Yeah. Snowballs. So S-N-E-A-U-X B-A. LLS. You know, we like grew up. I don't know. Yeah. Shans, did you uh, did you used to take Kool Aid and freeze it, put it in the freezer? Of course. Yeah. So that's what I was thinking, but it's nothing like that. S N E A U X B A L L S. Yeah. Because he keeps looking at the shirt. He's Snow having a hard balls. time over there. <laughs> okay. All right. Just followed you. Oh wow. Oh, that's not your average snowball. No, <laughs> it's dope, right? Dang, that's crazy. Those look delicious. Yeah, yeah so when he first awesome. came, I was just, you know, I've never worked with a company who uh, sold this type of product before. And I don't necessarily prefer to work with products, you know, at this time. But let's see. Let's do it. <laughs> Dang, these joints are still in gourmet snowballs. Gourmet so, snowballs. So how'd you get into gourmet snowballs? Uh, so, yeah. Living in Louisiana for seven years, um, like I said, my teammates, they introduced me to it. And it's literally a staple in Louisiana. Like, you'll find a snowball stand everywhere. So they're known. Gourmet snowballs. No, well, not gourmet snowballs. You got to add your twist to everything. Right. right? Um, so, but they introduced me to what a snowball is. So, like, I'm thinking crunchy ice, snow cones. And then they take me, they're like, I see the flavor list. I'm like, oh, they got cotton candy? Okay, cool. What is tiger's blood? I'm like, I'm used to like the cherry and the blue raspberry. Yeah, yeah, for Let me sure. get the blue and the red. Let me get red, you're right. yeah. Let me get red and blue. So I was seeing like these lists of like 60, 70 different flavors. I'm like, okay, this is cool. Like, let me just try it. So I got a cotton candy one. And I was like, okay, this is different. The ice is smooth. It's like flavorful. It tastes like cotton candy. And uh, then I started going back all the time. And mm. they're out there, they're inexpensive, like a dollar, dollar twenty five. Mm. So it's like something you could literally go to every day. All right. So that's how it really started. Um, well, you gave me the idea, but how did like, you start? Oh, so how I started. So when I moved back to Tallahassee after college, um, I was working at a financial firm, and I was doing fine there, but it just wasn't – like my clients were cool, but I, I, get, I was getting a lot of pressure from, I guess, the firm to do things that they wanted to do instead of how I wanted to do mm -hmm. it, even though I was getting my stuff done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so then I started thinking, I was like, well, 
what am I passionate about? What do I, what am I good at? And this goes back to when I was getting into self-development too. So mm-hmm. I started watching like ET stuff like that. And I was really getting into that kind of stuff. I was like, what am I passionate about? What am I good at? So I was like, what does my mom tell me I'm good at? It's like, well, kids are just always drawn to you for whatever reason. I was like, okay, that's weird. What else am I good at? Okay, well. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so was, what else am I good at? I'm good at baseball and sports. I'm good. I'm a visual learner. Um, so I'm, And I'm good at teaching, too, what I can do. Um, so I was like, well, how do I pair those two things together? And I was like, well, maybe I could start like a youth development program that I teach student athletes um, how to perform at their, ac- or their athletic level mm-hmm. and um, really just giving back to the community, too. That's the development side of it because mm-hmm. um, I'm really big into that. When I was at school, I loved to do the – I was one of the first people to always sign up on Saturday to do, like, community give back, stuff like mm-hmm. that. So I was like, let's tie those two things together because they have programs in college called – um, life skills is an actual program for student athletes and it's pretty much you go out in the community um, you help out while you're abusing your platform that's what it's really all about just giving back using your platform for something better um, so I was like how do I create my own program like that and I was like well I could do that I could teach kids and I could also do the youth development because I can do both and I was like, well, dang, when you start a business, you got to have money. Like, mm-hmm. how do I raise money? I'm not about to ask people for money. To this is your this. first business you ever started? Yeah, first business. Wow. I yeah. can tell you just, like, super green about the whole entrepreneurial thing. Yeah, I was like, I was like, dang, man, I'm not asking nobody for money. Like, how can I raise money? And at this time, it was summertime, too, um, and I live in a college town. So, you know, Saturdays, all the pools are just packed, right? So I'm like, well, I go to the pool with my friends on Saturdays already. Mm-hmm. So what can I do? Maybe I could sell some snow cones or snowballs by the pool, like for a dollar or something. I was like, sounds like a good idea. I could raise some money here and there. And I did some research while I was at work doing research, like what do I need, all the kind of equipment. And I made up my mind I was going to leave that job. And I was like, well, now I really got to do this. So I remember, I remember I got home and I went on eBay. I found a machine for like, I think it was like $150. I was like, because this time I have a, my budget was super mm. slim too, so uh, it was like two or hundred and fifty dollars for the machine. Um, I found a place that had ready to use syrup, which means it's already like in the bottle. All I got to do is pour it in my bottles and pour it onto the, mm. the uh, shaved ice. And I got a table, and I went to my first uh, apartment complex, just apartment community, mm-hmm. and uh, I talked to the property manager. I was like, "Hey, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to raise money for the youth development program that I'm starting. Um, can I set up here and?" serve snowball to your residents like on Saturday. He's like, yeah, that's cool. Um, so cool, I'll be here Saturday. Mm. Set up and literally I had a table and a tent set up and I literally uh, maybe sold maybe like three or four. Mm. But what happened was the, the property manager must have seen when I had a line, I guess. Mm. And he's like, at the end, he's like, yeah, man, the residents seem to really, they really love this. Um, do you guys cater? You had a line, but you only sold three or four? Yeah, but at that time, it was three or four at that time that he saw, I guess. Oh, gotcha, so gotcha, gotcha. it was gotcha. only the one little spurt. Yeah. <laughs> that was it. And, uh, yeah, he's like, um, do you guys cater? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Now like, we do. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So he's like, what are, well, what are your catering rates? And I was like, you have no idea. Like, I literally just started this, like, last week. Hmm. Um, Did you tell him that? Nah. Okay. Nah. Yeah. So I had, like... <laughs> I got on Word and typed out, like, my little catering. I feel like a New Orleans uh, picture and just made it kind of look pr- – it was – now that I look back at it, I was like, what was I doing? But I was just doing what I thought I had to do. And um, so, yeah, he's like, yeah, we have an event on next Saturday. Um, what are your catering rates? I was like, I don't I don't know. So I got on Google and looked at other snowball companies. What mm-hmm. did they charge for catering? I would say, like, $200, 150 I was like – that's a little too much. I don't feel cunt like really I, I, at the time I was like, nah, I can't ask that. So I said seventy five dollars for an hour. But my twist on it was instead of having to count cups, my twist was, hey, I would be out here for an hour and do unlimited snowballs. Mm-hmm. So to me, unlimited just sounds more attractive. Like you're getting more money for your um, what you're doing, and it's not bad though. For an hour, you're not gonna sell seventy five of them. Right. Right. I, well, I didn't and if you're going to sell something for a dollar, you're coming up. I don't know what I was doing. All I knew is I went from, you know, a dollar snowball to $75 in one day. Right. Yeah. Um, so then I set up there and um, they paid right on hand just like that. And I was like, dang, I just got $75 for an hour, you know, serving this ice. And <laughs> I was like, this machine is not going to cut it. So mm-hmm. I was like, let me get two of these machines. And mm. so I got two just because I was like, this one's going to overheat. 
and I got a backup because I could seventy five dollars a lot for me to be like, yeah, my machine overheated, you know. What year was this? This was 2014. 2014. Okay, so 2014. You had the table set up because you're looking to fundraise for what you thought your business would actually be, right? right. So you didn't start the snowballs because you thought this would be your business. You started uh-huh. it because you were fundraising for what you thought would be your business. But something happened that made you say, okay, this business is not for me. Um, yeah. Tell us about this is this is super funny. Things just always come full circle. So I remember you telling me a story about a guy that you talked to, um, CJ Stewart, mm-hmm. who is a former major league baseball player. Mm-hmm. And I didn't find this story out until a couple of months ago. But CJ Stewart actually went to high school with me. Oh wow! Yeah, he went to high school with me, and you reached out to CJ and he shot your dreams down or something yeah, like that? Yeah, he shot him down. <laughs> he shot him down. So I'll, I'll never forget this story. And this is one of those moments where everything kind of, it's one of those shifts that happened for me. Um, so I reached out to my former middle school baseball coach and I was telling him what I was trying to do. And I Google again and Facebook and I saw CJ, he had this program, I think it's called Lead, mm-hmm. where he does mentorship for student athletes um, as well as instructional stuff for the student. I was like, well, dang, that's exactly what I'm trying to do, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so my old coach, he's like, yeah, you need to reach out to this guy. And I was like, okay. So he gave me his number, uh, or I, I messaged him. He gave me his number. And I'm thinking, man, he's going to help me out. Like, it's going to be great. I'm sitting at the barber shop in the parking lot. Mm-hmm. I call him. Can you know, get the first jitter nerves? Like, man, okay. So he picks up. We start talking. You know, he's like, well, um, tell me, like, what are you doing? What's up? And I was telling him, like, what I was trying to do with the program. And he was like, sounds good, but why should I help you? I was like, uh, I was like, was like, what value are you bringing me? Like, why should I tell you all this stuff? I'm like, dang, bro, I'm just trying to get some, some answers. <laughs> I'm trying to get on. <laughs> That's all. I didn't, I didn't know where this is going. Um, so I say that to say, like, even though the conversation lasted over an hour, though, mm. despite how it started, I was like, dang, this dude's like shooting me down left and right, telling me, like, you're not credible because you don't have any experience doing this. And I was like, well, dang, he is right. Like, maybe this isn't what I should be doing. Um, so it's not that it discouraged me from doing it, but it made me realize, like, I do need to have some credible sources to do this. Um, I, I'm, I do need to bring some value. I'm going to ask somebody for something. I need to bring them something, too, not just mm. take, take, take. Yeah. So that was my first lesson in that. Yeah, two things on that. One, I think the um, the worst advice you can receive is bad advice from someone you respect Mm. because it's so easy for someone to lead you astray not that he's giving you bad advice but i think that's one and two is some of the hardest uh advice you can receive is uh um kind of deflating news or information about a project from someone you respect so i've had these mentors where they're 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 asking me the hard questions not to tell me it's not going to work but they're trying to figure out how it's going to work and get me to think about it but that is super deflating yeah it was especially it, when you're excited you're like oh he's gonna give it a game and you're he like, gave me his number right yes. i was i was excited i'll never forget exactly where i was at but mm. yeah i was excited um and where were you in your business at this point i wasn't this is before you even started yeah this is before oh, i wow. even started this is when i was all in on the um development program gotcha, and, I, gotcha. and that's what I was trying to figure out like how do I get that started um, oh so he actually discouraged you enough to start selling mm-hmm. snow cones mm-hmm. <laughs> so he literally like <laughs> talked you out of your dream that's crazy mm-hmm. he did he, he, I'm gonna say he talked me out of it because I still have that dream because when I was going into race or uh, serving not serving but going into these meetings with these property managers that was still the baseline was I'm raising money for the youth development program Maybe it wasn't going to start today, but that's the end goal for it. Do you ever plan to do that? Yeah, well, you actually brought up something um, one of our sessions before. You're kind of like how things go full circle. Mm-hmm. Um, and what Donnie was saying was like, my, my business now is really based on the community aspect and yeah. being that figure of seeing people be able to do something that's successful, um, but also giving back to the community and using the platform for something positive, which is sure. all what the youth development program, what I was trying to instill on the student athletes, but I'm actually doing it myself now. Yeah. Um, so it's cool to see that kind of go full circle. And now I have people, you know, wanting to 
pay it forward to people or mm. do something special to the community because they see me doing it. So it's not so much I have to have well, the Real quick, thing. so I, so none of, like, the money doesn't actually go into the program? No, nah, I don't have the program right now. But you tell the community well, not people. A, not anymore. Okay. That, not was, anymore. that was back then. <laughs> <laughs> that was back then. It's like, hey, man, try to start this program. Yeah, no, no, no. It's that almost like anymore. the kids that walk around with the little sheet, like, hey, we need some money for our football. With the water? <laughs> yeah, no, that was, with the water? I stopped it after yeah, the first year. You are year. not going to no football <laughs> tournament, football, child. But, but something, something big came out of this because... Think about how many people, like I know I had people along the way that tried to talk me out of my dream, right? Tried to talk me out of, no, you should just get a job. You should just do this. What qualifies you to do X, Y, and Z? And in this case, sometimes sometimes your goal isn't big enough, mm-hmm. right? So when you think about this case, Jared specifically wanted to help a small group of people, student athletes that were connected to him and he wanted to pour into them and teach, you know, give back in a community service type of way. But that conversation literally shifted him in another direction. And you think that he's just running a snowball business, but he does a day like a snow day in his town where he's really in the community. But now he gets to like, now he's a pillar in his community. When people want to fundraise for stuff or have someone who comes out and connects to the actual people He's high on the list. So you wanted to impact this small group. You did this business, which was your fallback business, and you end up impacting way more people in the process. That's like for somebody out there, like it always connects. It always comes back around. It always comes back around. Like don't get talked out of your dream, but maybe maybe if it's not working right now, just approach it from a different angle. Yeah. Approach it differently. So... I remember when, <laughs> I don't even remember at this time without looking at my notes where we start. He's been all over the mic. He's been every, get it, get it, get it, do it. Ah, mm. missed it. I remember, Shans, when, when we, I don't remember where you were when we first started, but I do know that at January, at the top of this year. Hold on, I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. Did I get him? You would have had to wash your hands if you did. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I got them. Okay. I do remember at the top of this year, January, um, Jared was bringing in about $3,500 a month from the snowball business. No, 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 no that's too, way too much. <laughs> in January, you were. No, 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 no. No, not January. It wasn't January? No, I was in the... Thir- oh, 3500 3500 okay. yeah, yeah. You're right, you're right. I'm thinking 35 I was like, nah. Yeah. So January of this year. January yeah. of this year, he mm. was at $3,500 a month. And now doing about $50,000, $55,000 a month, right, in income. And it didn't take the whole year to do that. I think we did that maybe maybe in the sixth month, June or July is when that started, about six months later. I, I think we're speeding. We're speeding. I need to, like, get up okay. to that. I got to oh, get yeah, up to that. Okay. So 2014. Okay, okay, okay. We were excited about the 75 bucks. We're excited about oh, the yeah, $75. Right? So did you have the good ice then? No, I did not. <laughs> I did not. I, it was like a Snoopy, not a Snoopy machine, but it might as well have been a Snoopy machine. Whatever that means. Like little crank you get for Christmas. No. Gotta, mm. Okay. Crank well. and ice. We didn't get <laughs> okay. that. That's what it was. Did you get that on your Christmas list? Uh, I didn't get any, I didn't well, have a that's what, that's what those machines were. And um, So 2015, so you're doing this for 12 months from the time you got you got the $75. Where were we? Yeah, so so the, the Fast Forward Beef Show, I had that first event for $75. But what I didn't know is that the property that I did the event for, they had sister properties. Mm-hmm. So they had four or five sister properties in the city. And when I did mm-hmm. their event, all the other sister properties started calling me to do their events for the next weekend. So it kept snowballing. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? <laughs> so, so then I went from that one event on that Saturday to two events the next Saturday. Then the other apartments called me. And then what happens with all the uh, apartment communities, they all see each, what each other's doing and then they do something different. Cause I was one of the first ones in Tallahassee to cater to the residents with snowballs. Like that mm. was, that was new to them. And they were having pool parties every sing- like Friday and Saturday for, you know, like for, uh, what's it called? Retention, mm-hmm. for, resident, uh, retention. resident retention, mm-hmm. just to give back to the residents. And I was like, well, just call me and you know, I'll be there. Um, so yeah, I was literally doing events like I'd do two events on a Friday, two events on a Saturday, and maybe like one event. But I was doing I was double booked like for like three months, mm. just on the weekends. 
So it's oh, rolling. Man. Yeah. It was How much were you making around that time? <laughs> man, I thought I was balling. Uh, I was probably probably like five hundred a week. Mm. That's a good little Yeah, yeah, for that's sure. A, that's a decent side hustle. Shoot, almost what you make it at your job, right? You was making what thirty something thousand a year yeah. at your job. Yeah, I was on like five hundred a week, and um, and I remember I was telling I was telling my mom about it because at, at the time too I was living at home too, so I didn't have any bills. So I didn't have any bills, oh, so I was really balling. Balling. Oh yeah, <laughs> full fledged rich. Yeah, I was good. Um, and she saw what I was doing. She's like, oh, it's cool, like. Yeah, but is this sustainable? Like, are you think people are going to keep buying ice? Because nobody was buying ice at this time. Remember, mm-hmm. I was just catering. So right. nobody was actually buying it. So then I had the idea. I started researching more Explain and more. catering, though. Because you think of catering, it's like, okay, I'm having an event. I make this spread, and I give the food. But catering is you just, they buy all the ice, and you just give it for free. So what they do is they just, I charge them an hourly rate. Okay. So I take care of everything for them. I say, when do you want me to be there? I'll be there from one to three. Okay, two hours. I'll provide everything. Y'all don't have to do anything at all. Just show me where the electrical outlet's at. Um, so when I do that, I literally just serve as many people that come. I serve them. Do you ask them how many people are going to be there? No, nah. because I, I I know I know how many I can serve per hour, and this is over gotcha. time. I learned. So I know I can only put out. You know, seventy-five to a hundred snowballs per hour. I know my cost for how much each one costs, mm-hmm. so therefore, I, it's always going to be a profit, no matter how many I serve. What is your so, range of? I'm, I'm sorry, I got you. What is your? Because I, I want to understand the business. What is the range that you charge per hour? Is it based on now? Now, so now we charge two seventy-five an hour. Um, that's under a hundred people. So. Over that, it could go anywhere up to, it could be like 300 to 350 an hour. Mm. Do you know the teeth I had to pull, though, to get Jerry? I can imagine. He was hanging about $75, yeah. but you had the right one. I, would, I increased every, like, every year, kind of. It was like, okay, I'd increase by like $25. So it went from right. $75 to $100. I was like, let's I'm see. like, yo. He's right on the phone. Yeah. It'll be $100. <laughs> I, I swear, that was like yeah. 150 Have I was you like, ever had the <laughs> Quote a proposal, it'll be uh, 350 <laughs> <laughs> That's a question. Like, <laughs> 350 Three, uh, And then if they say no, I mean, well, because I was just putting that out there for a good place for us to start. Nah, the, um, the worst is when you put your number out there, it'll be 350 and then you hear silence, and then you be like, well, I mean, we can negotiate. Like, they didn't even they answer got a discount yet. available. <laughs> it's 350 that's what I usually charge right. people, but for you. <laughs> it's always up for you. Were you playing that game? No, I, I never had to negotiate, actually. I, Do you know what that's a sign of? A sign. It's <laughs> always <laughs> too low. <laughs> oh. So do they take it? Right? When you say, when you say uh, it'll be 235, they say, okay, great. Do you get it? They don't get it. okay, great. It's like, okay. But I don't get any kind of drawback or anything. I never, right, because they're on the other end, like, yo, dude's coming for two seventy five. Unlimited right. two seventy five. What's happening though is the decision maker, the person that's swiping the card, it's not their money. Right, it's yeah. the apartment community's money. So that's they, true. they can, they're not gonna be oh, two seventy. All right, cool, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but also, that was another thing I had to learn was about the marketing budgets that apartment communities have. Mm, talk to me so about that. So that's really my niche market is apartment communities. That's who I cater to. That's mm-hmm. how I started the business. That's how I continue to run my catering side of the business. Now, birthday parties, all this stuff is cool and all, but I don't really put my focus towards doing like the private events like that, mm-hmm. unless it's a large amount of people. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Um, gotcha. So learning the marketing budgets, I know that what I learned, I made relationships with a lot of the par- uh, property managers, and I would pick their brains about like how they do the marketing aspect of everything. And they're like, "Yeah, we get you know five hundred or five thousand dollars, you know, in June, and we don't use all five thousand. We might get less for July." I was like, "So you always have to max out your budgets?" They're like, "Yeah, we have to max out. We try and overspend if we can because then we'll get more for the next budget." So they do all kind of like. They might buy Apple watches to give out or just stuff to get mm. people to sign leases or renew their lease for the apartment communities. Um, so by Yo, learning, you're dropping so many gems that I hope people are catching, like in terms of the idea, the conversation with the decision makers, knowing you're like you're cornering a market and finding out how much money they got. Mm-hmm. Right. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So by learning that relationships, could, relationships, every episode we get back to re- the importance of relationships. Mm. So, you didn't just show up because I know, um, and, and just to pull the principal out in this, 
sometimes we're so connected to the money that we're not connected to the person, mm. right? And so one person could look at this and say, oh, I got another job. I got this apartment community. And you show up, you do your job, you do your job very well. But the failed opportunity is not in creating the relationship. And one of the things that make you hit and help you grow is your ability to connect to people. So what was it? It, it, it was that just something naturally in you that said, let me create this relationship or were you trying to learn from them? Like, why did you, why, what made you realize like, okay, I need to start creating relationships and start asking these questions really, because who goes into a, a business and says, so tell me, tell me more about your budget and right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So how much money do you actually have on that card? Yeah. So actually when I think about it now, um, her name was Chantel. She was friends with my god sister, and she was working in an apartment community. And I was, I felt comfortable approaching her with what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So I told her, like, "Hey, I see the manager here. Like, this is what I'm doing. Like, do you guys have any?" I would let me backtrack. So I would always, I would literally go to every single apartment community and like introduce myself, tell them what I'm doing, give them the flyer that I made. And like, hey, do you guys have any events? And I would do this almost every single day to every, until somebody was like, yeah, we have an event Saturday. Great. Do you want me to come? Well, how much do you charge? Um, so anyways, going back, Chantel, she had owned a, uh, or she was a property manager. And I really would try to learn as much as I could from her because I felt comfortable asking her those kind of questions. So from her, I was like, well, tell me about your marketing budget. Like, how do y'all do that? Like, how much do y'all get? Or mm -hmm. what happens if you don't spend it? And she would just start telling me stuff. And that, I would take that note. So I'd go from her apartment community, what she told me. And then I go to the next one and be like, oh, I, I feel more confident going. Like, oh, I know y'all got 5,000. Like, what's my what's my 175 now? Yeah. Like, y'all got it. And I know you doing this over and over. And I know if I provide a good service and make it as easy as possible for y'all to where you don't have to clean up and you don't have to coordinate anything y'all are going to book me continuously because y'all don't have to do any work. Mm. Um, so that was a big, you get a lot of repeat customers. A lot. Clients? So at wow. the first year, like I said, it was me just going to all these communities or calling them weekly, introducing myself to the property managers. Um, so now it's at the point where I don't do that, but I go to re every year. I still reduce myself because there's so much turnover um, in that, in that industry. Um, Which so is good, though, because the people that you are charging seventy five dollars to or a hundred dollars, they don't know. Yeah, them days way past. <laughs> yeah. But do you get do you have some people that like uh, like th that you've been charging the same amount for years? Yeah. What I do is I try and keep it consistent with the apartment communities because, again, they all talk. Yeah. So maybe John from this one ends up leaving and going to this one. And then I say, well, hey, you said it was one seventy five and now you're charging two seventy five. Like, what, yeah. what's up? So I try and keep it consistent with all the apartment communities. Um, even the smaller ones, I still charge the same rate as I would charge the bigger ones. Now, my mm. profit is not going to be as big on the bigger ones, but it makes up because of the profit size on the smaller ones. Mm. So it's never, I never lose. And I always look at it when I go into these events, was like, okay, yeah, y'all, y'all got me this time. Y'all, y'all had 200 people show up. I served 200. I was working, I was sweating, but then I go to another one and they might have 10 people show up. He led. So I'm like, I'm, okay, well, that made up for the 200 I just served over here. So I didn't know apartment complexes had. I, well, I get, maybe I didn't think about the budget for for apartment complexes and community engagement. Well, you know what we should do, Donnie? Mm. We should go to apartment complexes and tell them we're going to put on like an entrepreneurship workshop or something like that, teaching them how to like pay their rent. Hey. I think and they can, would pay us. I think we could do something like that. You know, I'm a former property manager. So, mm. yeah, that's that's what I did for 13 years. I managed apartment communities, not complexes. And you'd have to put, um, uh, okay, did you one-up them? What do you Dude, mean? Communities instead of complexes? Yeah, she got I lived in an apartment complex. That's what I was, okay. I was, I mean, you know, it wasn't you, much of a community. It you was just, could have lived in an apartment complex. I'm just making it clear that I managed apartment communities. Right. There is a difference. And right? did you have to spend money on community engagement? Absolutely. Well, you didn't have to. You had it in the budget. It was allocated in the budget. And so if you didn't spend it, you couldn't shift it elsewhere. You just lost it. Mm. Right. So we wanted to spend it as much as possible. So when you have like resident functions and you got catered food and you got entertainment, you got people coming by. That's that's called that's resident lane. event. That's a lane. If you're watching this and you want if you are a, a community, you know, that now that I think about it, it was a young lady. She worked at an apartment. It was definitely a complex. It was a complex. <laughs> and she would buy shirts for her staff. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Right? She bought a work, work shirts and they put, we would put like their community, their um, their logo on the arm. And I never thought about it. Like, yeah, she was buying it off the butt. They got a budget. If you're watching this and you want us to come engage your community, okay? Like inspire, there. motivate them in this tough time. Just, you, you know, know actually, us- that's a really good idea. So somebody's probably going to jack it, but it's okay. We don't mind giving out ideas. Right now, especially with what's going on in our economy, Mm, right? You You have a lot of people who can't pay their rent. And we're about to go through it again. Analysts saying even worse than what we went through, you know, earlier with Mm. the pandemic. And so if you have any connections, if you're a resident or a property manager or an investor somehow, and you care about uh, the community being able to pay their rent, Bring us on, like for sure. Let's yeah. let's let's start that conversation. Yeah, and sure. if you have something to offer that could benefit, because you can't just go to an apartment community. What you can't do is just go and say, "Hey, I am a fitness trainer, mm-hmm. right? I want to come and, and do fitness lessons. Can you guys pay me for it?" What you can say is, for example, where I live, we have trainers who come out. For us, it's free. The community is paying for it, though. The apartment community is paying for it. And we can consider it an amenity, a standing amenity to have trainers who come out daily to train us if we want to participate in it. We have yoga instructors if you want to participate in it. I know some communities have like masseuse and, you know, all that good stuff. And then you have specialties like what apartment community full of kids would say no to a Jared coming to serve snowballs. For sure. Right. So if you have an idea or something that could benefit uh, a community. Think about the value, though. Sell, sell what value it brings. What mm. can that community offer as an amenity to their residents? I like that. And listen, just for those that are watching, we are servicing complexes and communities. You do complexes <laughs> and communities. <Both. laughs> complexes <laughs> and communities. Okay, so you're. Um, so yeah. Okay, now we could we could probably lead up to this this so fifty five thousand dollars a month. Yeah, yo. January thirty five hundred. Let me just tell you, when Jared initially came, right, and we talked, and and he wasn't making a whole lot of money at that time, but his passion and his heart was big. And I'm like, look, I'm gonna show up if you show up. And then when I saw him, I wasn't confident that that he would make money in the winter. Mm-hmm. You know, when I met him, when we started working, it was going into the winter. So I'm like, ooh. Um, so I'm telling him, okay, you need to focus on catered events, catered events, raise your prices, raise your prices. And I was suggesting different things that he could do with the school because he lives in a college town and this is what you need to do with students. When I saw him survive the winter, I'm like, okay, we could be on to something. Mm-hmm. So at the top of the year, I said, Jared, you're going to make $150,000 this year. You're going to make one hundred. dollars I'm going to set a goal for you, and it's going to be $150,000. Well, I said, how much do you want to make? Mm-hmm. He's like, I want a six-figure business. Mm-hmm. So you're going to make $150,000 this year. And he was like, <laughs> we meet on a Zoom face-to-face, right? right? And he was like, <laughs> 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 Wow. And now, fast forward 10 months, he's already done $400,000 this year in in actual can pull up the receipts of $400,000. And we're not even finished with the year. Um, Talk about that, though. Like, you didn't believe it at first. I would get onto these Zooms and be like, because we check numbers every Mm -hmm. week. Jared, how do you feel? How does it? Wow. How does this feel? How does this feel? He's like, I'm just. How did it feel like (laughs) I was just watching the numbers go. I was like, dang, that's a lot of ice. Like, <laughs> like people really, in my head, I'm like, people are really, you know, really supporting us like that. Like, it was, it's, it's really just mind blowing. Um, like you said, from the beginning, I think the year before, I was probably like 75,000, something like that. So, and again, that was the whole coaching thing. I was like, well, how do I get to the next level? Mm-hmm. Um, so I was like, well, I need some help because I'm doing what I'm doing now, but I could always need some help, right? Um, so when Donnie, she gave me some you know, strategic advice of what to do. And I'm one of those people, like, if you tell me something, I'm going to at least try it. Um, and everything's been working. So mm. credit to Donnie. That's awesome. <laughs> Donnie's well, Donnie. and, and, and not even credit to me because Jared is a hard worker. So I can coach, I can coach you, but I can't make you do the work. That's right. Fair. And so, um, Jared has never missed an appointment. I don't know if you've ever even rescheduled. A session. You may have had one reschedule because you were dealing with the job that I had to force him to quit. Yeah, um, we got to get into that too. Brother. But but I want to say prior to this year, Jared's bread and butter, even in that seventy five thousand that you made, 
was mostly catered events. Mm. But then we go into 2020 where though Florida didn't shut down, he had no catered events because Mm. you couldn't do these events like this. So we had to pivot very quickly like, okay, the plan was how do we get more catered events for the year? And now we can't do that. So now the plan has to be how do we get more customers Mm -hmm. in the store? Yeah. So yeah, I'll, I'll never forget because I have. How like, long did you have the store? The store is three years. Three, three years. years. And um, as we get up to that, like what were, were the hours? I thought that was pretty interesting. Oh yeah. So I was I was working full time at this time. So twenty. Was it twenty twenty? So three years ago, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> that's a lot of math. Not really. But uh, three years ago, I opened the. I had. Let me back up even more for you. I'll just give you a visual. So I was working at a property appraiser. Um, and at this time, I literally just had my trailer. Um, so I had the trailer I was setting up on this corner lot that I found through the property appraiser's website. And mm-hmm. the property owner was like, yeah, you can, nobody's going to buy it. I have it at a premium. Like, nobody's going to buy it. So I was like, cool. All right. Well, you let me set up there for free because mm-hmm. it was youth development. Youth development. At so that I still, time. Yeah, at that time. <laughs> so I was tied into that. And I thought I was going to boom because there was so much foot traffic. I was like, oh, I'm, I, one day I was there just counting how many people were going back and forth, like 300 people, take 25% of that. I'm mm. like, anyways, I made like $20 a day. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I still had my catering, so I was still good. Um, the catering has always been like my bread and butter, like she was saying. Mm-hmm. So, um, but anyway, happening, I got faced with the decision of, um, I had the job for the property appraiser reach out to me. And then I was like, well, do I keep doing my snowball stuff? Like, this is what I really enjoy doing. Even though I'm, I thought I was making, you know, a lot, that's what I enjoyed doing. I was like, but dang, you know, this is security over here. This is, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, and I always have a, you know, a thought of, you know, God puts you in the right position at the right time. He puts everything in front of you when it's supposed to happen. So I was like, well, if I take this job, maybe something, I'll meet somebody or something's going to happen out of this job that I take. So I took it. And there's the one guy, he would always call to get his property taxes discounted. And I had to go meet him at his property, his rental property. So I'm like, dang, like over and over again doing this. Um, and during that time too, I, I always take a trip to New Orleans to get supplies and to kind of just to group, regroup for the year. Mm-hmm. And I, there's one guy, he owns a, uh, a actual storefront. And I went into the visit just to kind of see what he was doing to see their process. And again, I wanted to talk to him mm-hmm. just to get some advice, right? right, right. And again, I got <laughs> shot down. Uh, and this is another shift for me again. So he, he was telling him when I was like, yeah, I set up it with my trailer. You know, I'm doing like $500 a week. Like I'm thinking I'm doing great. He's like, yeah, you're not gonna make it. I was like, like what? <laughs> like he said, yeah, you're not gonna make it. You have to do more. And at that moment, I was like, I saw his customers coming in and out in a storefront. It's not common to have a store, a snowball store shop, right? Um, you yeah, had customers coming in and out. So then I was like, well, dang, well, maybe I could look at like storefronts and just see. So I got back to Tallahassee, working as a property appraiser. And so I had access. I knew how to get all this information, how to find it. And I'm like looking at the rental rates. I was like, uh, nah, I'm not going to, this is not going to work. Mm-hmm. Like $25 a square foot. Nah, that's out of my budget. So I was like, well. You know, maybe it's not for me, right? And so the guy who always calls to get his property taxes reduced, he calls me. He's like, yeah, you meet me at this spot. So I'm driving. I happen to look over. And at this time, I'm still looking at units, right? So I see this vacant unit. I'm like, okay, cool. And I see the guy's name. I was like, that's probably not him. So I meet him. And I was like, at the end of our meeting, um, I was like, yeah, by the way, are you associated with this property over here? He's like, yeah. I was like, well, tell me a little bit more about it. He's like, well, it's, I'm looking at this time. 1,200 square feet is what I wanted. Reasonable rent is what I wanted. And a good location is what I wanted. So he's like, yeah, it's 1,200 square feet. He's like, here's the rent. I was like, okay, cool. That's checks too. I was like, and it's the location. I'm like, cool. Well, when is it available? Oh, I said, uh, next month we'll be done renovating it. I was like, dang, that's like soon. Mm-hmm. He's like, do you want to go look at it? And so when I envisioned having a shop, I was like, I'm going to paint the walls purple. So we opened the doors, and I kid you not, the walls are already purple. Wow. Right? So I'm like, dang. Like, it was on a silver platter for right. me. So I was like, I got it. And I wasn't ready at this point whatsoever to sign mm-hmm. a lease, but I was like, like this is what I got to do. Because keep in mind, I'm working full time. Right. Who opens a, a restaurant for two hours, right? Yeah. Especially serving ice. Mm-hmm. Like, so and what hours was it? I was open from five o'clock to seven o'clock. Five so to I seven. Got off, I got off work. Like happy hour. Right. <laughs> Only open. You got to train your clients to like meet you in that window. Yeah. And that's what happened. 
that's what happened. It was kind of a, I didn't realize it, but it was a marketing tactic where it was like, if you're going to come, you got to come now. It's no, oh, we'll go later. Nah, you got to come between five and seven. Because when I say I open at five, I'm open at five. When I say I'm closed at seven, I'm walking out the door at seven. Wow. Why? Why? I gotta, I, well, I have kids. They got to get home. Mm. Uh, bath time, all that kind of stuff. So that was, that was my thing. Seven o'clock was the cutoff. Mm. Who came up with that time? You or your wife? I did. Okay. <laughs> I thought, hey, bro, you need to be home by seven. Yeah, seven o'clock, cause that, I know what time bad time it is. I know what all that stuff is. So seven o'clock was it. Um, and the other reason was cause it was like I think it was daylight savings time, so it was getting dark. At, I was like, I don't want to be here when it's dark at eight. I don't think people are gonna come like that. Yeah. I've already worked all day long already, so seven o'clock was it. And what I started to notice was people were coming in. They were coming in, and it's like they were rushing to come in at that. What was the promotion around getting people there? At that time, I really wasn't doing too much promotion. A lot of it was just word of mouth. Um, Because, again, I had some or a lot of customers from the catering side of the business that they knew because I was still I was still catering still. And telling them and telling them, yeah, we have a we open up a shop. Um, So in in the area where you're doing all these community complex. Yeah. So my my shop is across from Florida A&M University. Mm. Um, So I get a lot. Oh, you won. Why? Yeah. Well, right across from FAMU. Because I thought the student market was going to be my market. Mm. That's what I thought. I was like, I'm going to be booming because the students are going to come here. Yeah. I already do catering for them. Like, they're going to know me. Mm. Nah. <laughs> wow. Students were not, they were not coming. <laughs> it was wow. all families, single families, which is even better because think of the ticket price. You know, mm. students, you come in one or two. Families, you might have a family of five people coming in. Mm. Um, How much do you sell your snow cones for now? Uh, four dollars, four dollars. So yeah, four dollars, five dollars, six dollars. If you want the specialty ones, with the cheesecake, right, right. And the specialty ones, the specialty ones, ones are say six twenty five, extra two twenty five. I love it. So we got average uh, ticket price of probably like seven dollars from a dollar. From a dollar. Yeah. All right. So and so, overhead on that, like, what's your cost to make a cup? What's your cost uh, to make a four dollar cup? Y'all not gonna believe it. Uh, like fifteen cents. Oh, we about to open the snowball business. I keep sure. talking to Jared. Franchising is something that we're gonna we're gonna move into. Mm. Baby steps. Yeah. Baby steps. I like that. Mm-hmm. Baby step right here to the A. Let's right here. We're it. about to right here. What's good? <laughs> yeah. So it was a lot to learn. It was a lot to learn through that. I know we skipped a bunch of stuff, mm. but just learning from making the syrups to where to source stuff at. Um, Cause when I first started, obviously I didn't know how to do any of that stuff. And then the machinery changed. Um, so now I make my own syrup, make my own ice. Like I just, I make my everything so that, cake. yeah, wow. make my own cheesecake. So, um, so if through this, um, through the 2020 pandemic, right? Did you do something different or did you just notice that people just started coming in more? Uh, so what the sh- the shift that happened was, um, like I said, I had a big event with Florida A M Florida A M that I have every year. That's my biggest catered event. When they called and canceled that, I was like, uh, and at this time the shop wasn't doing the numbers that it is now either. So I was like, dang, um, that's like a lot of the revenue that I was expecting, <laughs> and y'all just canceled. <laughs> yeah, I was like, the shop is cool and all, but I still needed that that event. Um, so what ended up happening was we we're still Florida. We we're still allowed to be open um, essential businesses, and I guess I was essential. Mm. Um, so and people didn't have things to do. And what I realized was that I was always on my phone, just scrolling, not looking for anything, just always scrolling. So I was like, well, dang, well, most people are home, too. They're probably doing the same yeah. thing. Yeah. So, hey, let's amp up the social media presence. Um, so I went from posting. Were you not doing that before? No, nah, I wasn't. I was probably posting like three times a day, maybe. Something like that. And I think you had at the begin, beginning of the year, I think your social media following was under 2,000. Yeah. That's a lot. Three times a day? Well, maybe it wasn't even three times. It was, he wasn't posting good content. Let's say oh, it wasn't good content. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was, it's one thing to post content, but posting good content is a whole also got to think, too, is that I didn't have any customers coming in like this that to really to get that kind of engagement, like customer engagement. Mm-hmm. Um, so it did help having more customers, and I could post more content. Um but yeah, really just posting more. There was um, a strategy, though. Yeah, there was a strategy. Let's walk through the strategy. strategy. The strategy was uh, post more. That was a lot of the strategy. Just uh, not, uh, not. I know, but Donnie, it wasn't, hey, just post more. It was post more, but more captivating um, images, videos of, like, show, like, I take pride in the ice. My mm-hmm. ice texture is the softest ice you'll find anywhere, right? So 
capture it being the softest ice. Like, why is your eyes mm. different? So if you look at some of the videos, it's almost like when you rub the spoon across, it's like velvet. Like, mm. people don't have that. So like, that's different itself. Um, doing like different specialty snowballs, or now we have stuff like the like a s'more snowball. Mm -hmm have an apple pie one, which is really good. So it's mm. like an apple pie syrup with apple <sighs> pie ice cream. Like nobody has that. So just doing Sheesh. different things to keep people engaged. And like one mm -hmm. of the biggest thing is that on the shop, it says, uh, it says snowball home of the cheesecake stuff snowball. Mm. Right. So when people see that, like, what is what that? Is that? Right, and right. you're intrigued. So you're going to, you're going to come in and be like, well, sure. and then you're going to ask questions. Then you're going to try it. And then once you try it, it's a wrap. Dang. So, it's a wrap. Donnie, give it to me. Give me the strategy from your perspective. How did you lay it out? So, or what did you see mm -hmm. in this content? And how did you? The content was just in the beginning, it was just like, here's a finished product, right? This is what I sell. Here's the finished product. But after getting to know Jared for a while, this is this calm, laid back, like pleasing demeanor, this likable guy. Mm -hmm. Jared reminds me of the story of the tortoise and the hare. Obviously, you being the tortoise, right? You're just going to move slow and creep your way on through, straight through the finish line, right? And so one of the things that works in his favor, Jared is incredibly charming, incredibly charming. And I noticed that his page was lacking emotion and connection, right? It doesn't matter what you're selling. Mm -hmm. You need to... Jared is his brand. So the people who were coming into the shop were coming into the shop, trickling into the shop because they remember this nice guy who they had a great experience with at a catering event. And so when you're building a business and you are the brand, then people want to know more about you. They want to feel you. They want to connect with you. And I said, Jared, you're incredibly charming. We're going to leverage that on social media. That needs to come across on social media. So then we went into, because he would, he would always be so thankful on our calls, like, man, this is amazing. I didn't expect this. I'm just so grateful. Show that on social media, right? Show that on social media. Ex express the gratitude. Tell people how you're feeling. And, you know, so that was one angle, you know, connecting him more so. Then what I tell you, I want, I want, to, I want to want to eat the snow cone through my screen, yeah. right? I want to eat this. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Make me salivate for this. So then it was like the slow pours and the slow syrup mm -hmm. drizzles and, you know, people, you know, and then we had to create like some staged, propped, humongous snowballs oh, yeah. that you don't <laughs> sell, but just these really like, you know, a fishbowl, a drink, fishbowl, yeah. just these huge kind of staged images, something that would shock your page and get people yeah. to stop, you know, and scroll. And then we played around with... Um, Let's try different flavors out. Let's put different flavors out and invite people to come in and try those flavors. Let the community vote on your product. Should I do this ice or this ice? Should I do these jeans or these jeans? Should I do this service or this service? Mm -hmm. If you get them involved and poll your audience and they feel like they had ownership in you making that decision, they want to support it. Mm -hmm. They want to be a part of it. So social media was a huge um, leverage point and it really, it sounds so simple but like how many I've, I've, I've had to like, Jared, what's up? Where's the social media where, right. you know, anytime the numbers weren't as powerful as the week before, I could always go back. Mm -hmm. Well, you weren't really That's doing true. what you do on social media. Mm. Let's get that back up. You know, and, and so many. And again, this is especially vital for personal brands, people who are attached in the face of their brand. Mm -hmm. When you get missing People forget about you. There's, I think, 23 million users on Instagram. And so if you go, there are going to be some people who are super loyal, who are looking for you. But for the most part, people will forget you. Yeah. And so you cannot, you can't risk being forgotten about on the Internet if you're building a personal brand. Yeah. So you have to pick your platform and decide how you're going to connect to your audience, whether that's Instagram or LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever it is, whatever your angle is. When you find that angle, you have to commit to it. And it was really Jared committing to his angle. Um, not only that, I had, you know, we had to, we had to say, look, it's time to hire. <laughs> right, 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 right. It's time to hire. Like, you know, there was a time when the line is like wrapped outside the building. And I'm like, people right. don't want to stand in that long line, right? And so if they're not wanting to stand in that long line, now we have to build the team. Yeah. So the challenges that come along with building a business that just takes off, you know, some people would say, I'm making all this money, I wanna keep it, keep it, keep it. 
well, no, we got to satisfy customers on the back end. So it wasn't just front end work, right? We got to keep them so we can look great on the internet, but what's the experience? Yeah, for sure. For and we sure. talked about the experience. So there were simple changes that happened in how from, from the time a customer ordered their product to the time they got it in their hand, we mapped out the SOPs or standard operating procedures for, for what that looks like. Um, and so it's these little details that you don't realize you need, yeah. that you need. And when people come in and they don't have to wait forever or when they understand, like, you know, Jared does a happy hour, they understand, well, it's happy hour. So I'm going to have to wait a little longer. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I can generally come in and guarantee that my experience is going to be the Chick-fil-A experience, which it is, mm -hmm. then I'm going to keep coming back mm -hmm. and I'm going to keep coming back and keep coming back. And then that led us to um, a second location. A drive through. <laughs> mm, just to piggyback on what you're saying, it was really. Hold on one second. So, Tom, you just set, if you want to set up over there, it's all good. We'll be wrap, we'll be wrapping up in a second. You good? All right, cool. See, this is piggyback. It was really, like I said, the community engagement, um, making everybody a part of the brand. Because at the end of the day, you don't have the business without the customers. Um, so, if your customers aren't the ones supporting, if you don't have customers supporting, you don't have a business. So. I try and make them as big of a part of the business. Like, thank you guys. You are the true superheroes of this. Like, you guys are the ones who are paying the rent. I got the keys, but you guys are right. the ones that are making this happen, right? You guys are the ones that are telling people, hey, you got to try the the ace, the strawberry cheesecake. You got to try it. You got to do this. Yeah. I'm not the, I can post a picture and I can market it, but your word is more powerful than my, my image and what I'm yeah. saying. Um, so, like I say, you just really, the customers are really the ones who are, you know, running the ship really, you know, like I said, I'm just kind of directing it, but they're the ones that are really gotcha. doing it for me. That's strong. So, and, and you not too long ago actually left your job. So you're building this business mm -hmm. and then you leave. Yeah. A lot of people, they didn't even, Why? A lot of people didn't even know I had a job other than that. Why but did it take so, or how much money were you making at your job? Like 30, 35. You're making a 30, year. Like $35,000 a year. Yeah. And you have this business that's booming. Yeah, the catering, well, the catering business was actually making me more. Just the catering was making me more than my job was at the time. But again, I always say like you just I had the job because you don't know what's going to come from it. So if I didn't take that job, I would have never met that guy who now I have the storefront from. True. Um, I would have never met certain connections if I didn't have that job. So that's mm -hmm. how I look at the job. Because anytime I take on something that I don't really feel too comfortable doing, mm -hmm. well, what's the positive aspect of like what am I? There's something in there for me. Yeah. Um, I'm not mad at it though, because you've, I mean, you're like, you know, doubling your income, right? You're making, mm -hmm. you know, X amount of dollars here and you're making, you know, more money outside. So that's like a collective amount. So it's right. kind of hard to leave the job, but what that's made good. you say, all right, let me, I'm done with this. <laughs> yeah, I'm done with was, these peanuts. It was the, um, just the time, man. I was, I was really running myself like 120 miles. I was going. Like there was no breaks from the time I I'd, I'd get up early before work, go to the shop to make sure the ice is ready or uh, make sure that I have enough syrup made, all this kind of stuff. Then I would go to work. Then I'm at work. I'm getting calls about catering. Like, hey, uh, are you available this day? I'm like, dang. Okay. So pretty much, they were gonna fire you anyway, because I'm sure your your, honest, your she, they, activity at your job, like, bro, they should have they should have fired me. <laughs> <laughs> I know the quality of work was just <laughs> trash yeah. at this point. Yeah, my quality started going down. It really did start going down. Um, but I was still getting my work done. But my priority was my business. Like, if sure. somebody calls me to a catered event, I'm not gonna say no because I have to go to work. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna tell you this carry event. Hey, I need to be off from one to <laughs> right. three at the end. My job was super flexible. That was the other thing. Mm -hmm. Super flexible. I didn't have to ask for permission to take off. It was just like, hey, put your time in. Mm -hmm. Okay, don't know no questions asked. But then at the end, they started asking more questions. Yeah. Like, well, I see you took off, man. Well, where were you at this time? You your hour, you lunch is an hour, you were gone for hour 30. I was like, and at this time too, um, like I said, raising twin I have twin daughters and a newborn. So I was just doing because. doing all that, man. It just was it was starting trying to get home one time and just ripping and running. It Let me say much. though, when Jared started, um, when he when he started, one of his first the two things that he wanted to do was make six figures and quit his job. And in the beginning, you were like, So so when can I quit my job, bro? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, not yet, not yet. And so 
we put parameters in place. I set parameters and like, if you meet this, this, and this, because I'm not that coach. I'm not going to, this man is a husband. He's got three babies. I can't in good faith say, quit your job and let's just go hard at this, right? So at the time, the job was super flexible. He didn't really have to go into the office. He was out in the field more, and this is pre-pandemic. Um, and we put these parameters in place. Okay, if you do this, this, and this, then I will co-sign you leaving your job. But when he got to that time, when he did this and this and this times three, He's like, well, I don't know. I'm just going to wait another week. Um, I know where I'm gonna, it's coming from. He's I'm gonna, a <laughs> I'm sure of I'm gonna, it. I'm going to wait another week. And remember, we had this conversation in a previous uh, in a previous episode, like that job will just keep you there because yeah. it's the check, it's the benefits, it's the, it's the feeling of security and guarantee. Mm-hmm. And so it came to the time where, you know, I'm like, okay, Jared, you really need to start thinking about transitioning into full-time entrepreneurship, which wasn't until this year, just a few months ago. This man's making thirty, forty thousand dollars a month, and he's still going into his job making thirty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. And I'm like, Jared, this is no, 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 no. We can't. Like <laughs> right. at this point, like now, I'm demanding right. that you quit your <laughs> job because now it's costing you yeah. more money. Hundred percent. You being and, and so when you're when your job and people ask this question all the time, how do I know when it's time to quit my job? There are several deciding factors, but one of them is if you're if it's costing you more money to be at your job than it mm-hmm. than it is to work your business, then that's a surefire sign. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had to have a conversation with your wife, and she got on the Zoom, and I'm like, "Listen, I assure you that Jared will not quit this job prematurely." And she's like, "Okay, <laughs> okay." I was, ready, I was ready to get out of there. Yeah, wow. <laughs> from not even this year, like last year probably like right when i opened the shop mm-hmm. and um that was probably when i was like okay yeah I, I probably don't need this i don't need the job but it's cool like i don't do i don't do a whole lot mm-hmm. like it's real easy i just drive around measure houses oh they got a window permit how like it was real simple like it didn't take any pressure off me but at the same time it took time away from the business yeah um but yeah, yeah but it was one point where uh, I just had a bunch of stuff going on. I remember I got called into the office, which was numerous times, but I got called into the office um, and they're just like, yeah, you know, we really don't want to let you go because um, mm-hmm. we know you really need this. And in my head, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in my head, I'm like, y'all have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you need this, man. You <laughs> no need this. Uh. I was like, I understand. You know, I appreciate you guys keep giving me chances here and there. You know, I'm, I'm going to try and make sure I get my priorities straight. And then it just got to the point where I was like, yeah. You got I, your priority straight. Yeah, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I'm, I hate having to keep reporting to you guys and, like, be disappointed to you, I guess. And kind of, I don't want to tarnish my name because, like, oh, yeah, Jay, he don't work. He just, yeah. he be riding around going to deliver ice and syrup in the county truck. It, like, <laughs> in the county yeah, like, no. Nah. So, uh, Way to yeah. leverage your job to build your wow. business. <laughs> right. It but happens. now, so you went from this uh, table. You went from this table now you have a shop, or you went from the table to a trailer shop, to the shop. Right. One man show, open two hours a day. Mm-hmm. How many employees do you have now? Yeah, now we have ten, ten or eleven. Um, between we, the store and the drive through. Between the store and the drive through, right? So it got to the point to where it was just me, obviously working, which was fine from like beginning hours. Um, and then I had I hired two employees to open up from two to seven. And, and then the spike happened, and it got to the point to where I had to have four people in the shop at the whole time from one to seven. What do you mean the spike happened? Like, it just went, I'll never, it was spring break of last year, and at this time I had two employees, and I was like, I know as a college student, like, I want to go on spring break, I want to enjoy my time, I'm not going to have you guys here, like, go enjoy your time, like, I can hold down the shop by myself, mm-hmm. I'll be good. And it was on a Saturday, and like, I had a line at the door, which was kind of weird, I was like, okay, this is different, but I can manage it. Like, okay, whatever. They come back Monday. I was like, yeah, I tell them, like, yeah, we had a line at the door, line at the door. Like, it was crazy. And like, then Monday was busy. Then Tuesday was busy. Then mm. Wednesday, it, it got busy, busy. Then the next Saturday, I was like, maybe this is a weird week. And then that Wednesday, we literally didn't sit down. Like, normally we would serve somebody, sit down, chill, talk, serve somebody else. It was like work the whole mm. six hours. And then it just kept going. I was like, maybe some fate. Like, I don't know what's happening. It just no, kept going and going and going. That's so dope because it just seems like you became more, you quit your job one and you become a, 
well, I don't know if this was the point, but you just became more intentional about growing and just the consist. Sometimes the consistency just catches. It just mm-hmm. hits. So like even this podcast, we're doing these podcasts and we had about 8,000 subscribers in August. And the only thing that um, that that changed was the consistency. I, I told my morning meetup, I said, if we don't put out a podcast on Monday, I'm gonna come on here and I'm gonna give away $200 on a Monday. And I said, every single Monday, hold me accountable because I wanna make sure like we're consistent. And um, one of the episodes hit and the joint just goes crazy. And then people start watching all the other episodes and those start going crazy. But it wasn't that it, we did anything other than get consistent and just like mentally like focus on it. And some people say, yo, it's just, it just happened overnight. You can't explain it, but you were consistent, gave a good product and it seems like the yeah. spike happens. And that's what you said about like consistency. Like one of the things to take pride on is if I say I'm gonna be open from five to seven, I'm gonna be open from five to seven. If I say I'm open all year long, I'm gonna be open all year long. I don't mm. care if it's, there's a time where it's like 30 degrees outside, but I was still open. Boom it. I wasn't expecting nobody to come in. Maybe like one person, but right. I was like, hey guys, I told you. It was 30 degrees open. in Tallahassee? It was, it was, it was a, a off day. I don't know what was going on. Mm. But yeah, it was during the winter time. And I was like, if I told you guys I'm gonna be open, I'm gonna be open. Yeah. And that's the same, I keep that same. like. I want to be so consistent. Like you don't have to, you shouldn't have to check your phone. And be like, is he open mm-hmm. today? Yeah. Which is it's cool because I have people calling me now mm-hmm. all the time. Like, dang, I put all my hours on Google and Instagram and all the different platforms you would look at. But um, I want people to know, like, I'm yes. going to be open. Don't worry. I will. I promise you. Unless the hurricane comes and knocks, right. I was even open during the hurricane. The hurricane we had. I was safe. I was safe. I was safe. I love it. But before we we wrap it up, uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of, like uh, for you, Jared, so early on when we saw how much work is involved, you know, you have a location Mm -hmm. and you know that you have to be open from open until close. You know that if your team member calls in, you got to cover it. Yeah. You know that when more inventory has to arrive, you bring it. If if there's a shortage on cash, you got to be there, right? Yeah. And so one of the things that you did in your brand was establish a way to earn passive income through your like morning meetup and your coaching programs. And so Jared has now done the same thing. Like mm. now that I have actually, uh, one thing that I love about coaches and, and the way that I prefer to train a coach is to actually go through the steps, right? Yeah rather than trying to teach the elite level, let's let's start here, let's actually experience the steps. You experience yeah. the steps. You have mm-hmm. a similar kind of journey of working your way off of this job to do this thing. 100%. That turned into something even bigger than what you ever wanted it to be. Yeah. And so because Jared has now gone through the steps, so if, if you have no budget, I got you, I can help you, I can, and you wanna do this, I can teach you. You have a little budget. I can teach you. You got a lot of budget. I can teach you because I have now experienced all of those three pillars to be able to effectively help other people. And so we started to notice that because of his consistency, because of the success and the community is paying attention, he now has like other snowball businesses around the country following him and now has these people like. How do I do this? How can I do this? So what do you think I did, Shane? Oh, of course, of course, it's course time. It's course time. <laughs> <laughs> it's program time. Uh, we're not we're, we're we're not there yet with a completed um, course, but we do have a great structure for a program because yeah. this goes back to your community help, like helping people establish success at whatever it is yeah. that they have going on. So I know that you have an ebook, right? Mm-hmm. A free ebook. Free ebook, yeah. Um, so it's really just a three a, a guide to help those get started from every level. There are three types of snowball businesses. Um, so we start off with the table and tent, which is you know the most inexpensive starter package. Um, then you also have the trailer setup, and then you also have the storefront setup. So I break down what's needed for both just to get started. Um, and you can find a link for that in my Instagram bio. Um, so I have that set up for anybody who wants who's interested in building a six figure snowball business. Mm. Uh, so I have that. And again, I'm also taking on some uh, one-on-one coaching too. Cause like I said, people across the country gotcha. have been 
reaching out to me like, well, how did you get your ice like this? Or why is your surf like this? Um, and what I'm starting to realize is that the stuff that I thought is just normal, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'd love to share my knowledge with that. So if you're interested in that, also find links in bio as well. Um, Snowballs is my Instagram name. Yeah, let's give us the close. Give us all the ways to find you. Is that Actually. what we're doing right now? Okay, let's, 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 let's get together. Okay, yeah. So you can find me um, on Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Um, Snowballs, S-N-E-A-U-X. B A L L S um, that has access to you know Facebook links, coaching programs, ebook, um, catering events. If you want to book me for that, um, I will travel if the price is right. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's how you can find me. Good, good. Well, get get some get some closing words together, okay? Something to leave the people with, okay? We're gonna um, um, just kind of want to say thank you for joining the podcast because I think your story is just amazing of you know like consistency and not not having a business degree or even an idea or this is your you know your 10th business that you tried and one actually worked this is like your your green i'm gonna start with a dollar and wow i made 75 bucks for an hour that's (laughs) awesome to um to you know the year isn't even over and you know um over four hundred thousand dollars that is an amazing story and just you know holding balancing them both until it's absolutely impossible to keep your job so um your story is absolutely important and um i appreciate you coming on the show i appreciate you um so this podcast is sponsored as always by the morning meetup the only community the only community of entrepreneurs that gather all across from all across the country every single morning 8 a.m to 9 a.m eastern standard time we get together we talk we grow we connect um there's a lesson that we're teaching this month we was on content creation i think next month we're um we're going to be speaking on um you know your uh Uh, getting your financial house in order. And every single month we have a different theme. So um, uh, amazing guest speakers. So you'll be on one day, right? Yeah. You'll be, okay, cool, cool. Oh, there it is. (laughs) So uh, make sure you go to themorningmeetup.com, themorningmeetup.com. It is live, interactive every single day. It's not pre-recorded, but you will get the recordings if you can't make that particular morning, Monday through Friday. So this podcast is also sponsored by the... Miss Donnie Wiggins and Six Figure EDU the dopest platform for those who want to build their business as a coach, consultant. You want courses, you want digital products, you want to serve people in a valuable way digitally. I am the person to help you do that. We got social proof right here. We got social Social proof. And this wasn't on purpose. This wasn't on purpose. This story was important. Thank you. you. Yeah. So uh, Six Figure EDU. No, seriously, if you are someone who is looking to put together a coaching program, a consulting program, you want a course, you want a group, you want to have a digital way to provide value to your tribe, uh, get at me, sixfigureedu.com, or you can hit me on Instagram and connect with me in one of the links there. Um, I think I think this was dope. Yeah, yeah. I think this was dope because we show a lot of success on this platform, a lot. And it's important that we show success that can connect to a different group of people, yeah. you know what I mean? And uh, having somebody, I think this is the great, uh, people say, well, how do I build a personal brand if I'm an introvert mm-hmm. like this? Clearly, <laughs> right, 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 right. Like this, so w- what's your takeaway, anything? No, yeah, absolutely, just the, the consistency and just going at it. And like, you don't have to have all the information, you just have, an, have to have an idea, stop looking at all these people who are making a hundred thousand dollars a month or, you know, a, a million dollars a month. Like my man was like, yo, I'm trying to make $75 an hour. Then we'll scale it up. And like, people don't want to go through the process. So my takeaway is definitely just go through the process, enjoy the journey of the process. Yeah. So, and then mine is probably going to be, uh, that, that was definitely one that I would touch on, but get help, ask yeah. for help. And, um, in asking for help, if you hit a brick wall with that particular Avenue, then, ask for a reference. Yeah. Jared originally came into your DMs and said, hey, you know, in response to you having some space open that went very quickly by the time he got to you, it's like this space is gone. And you said, I don't have the capacity to train anybody else. And he didn't stop there. Yeah. He said, well, who who's in your top five? Mm-hmm. The way that you ask that question, though, is so saucy. Yeah. It's like not, not who do you recommend, who's in your top five, yeah. right? And then was able to find a reference there and then just continuing to ask for help, but not just in how to build the business. 
He asks for help also via his social media and in store. He asks for help and feedback from his customers Mm -hmm. who are responsible for keeping the business flourishing, right? What do you think about this? Should we do this? How do y'all like this? Ask for help. And I don't think I got a referral for... Anyway, we're going to have you close this out, Jerry. I, I just want a meal at Ocean, Ocean Air. Like, she's been, like, she said she's going to take me to Ocean Air, and she just hasn't. So it's Actually, just one of those things. Ocean Air is a, it's, it's an, some people call it five stars. It's, it's nice. I'm not going to do that because y'all going to eat me up. Isn't five Ocean stars Air is a nice, though, right? Five stars? It is probably a five star. I would call it more of a four star, but it's rated a five star seafood restaurant. Now, you mind you, Chance has only. I think so, right? I, don't think so. I do think so. Chance has only ever taken me the most fancy places, the Cheesecake Factory. But which he knows is the menu, like, bro, he knows it. But he multiple times. And, and I invite her to everything I'm doing. You did. And, and it's a special and menu, too. If I'm doing an event, she's involved some way, whether hosting or something. Chance yeah. knows that I am not, like. And all I want. I'm not going to, like, get one out meal, there. Same one meal. You know what I mean? One meal. <laughs> I mean, a light little meal. Have I but never said, treated you to a meal? No, you have not. But Tell I me have, one. I have. <laughs> Yo, did you hear that? She said, have I never? And I said, no. She said, well, <laughs> you're right. I have, I have sent you several cash apps. Maybe not several, but I sent you, I sent you, I sent you a hefty <laughs> amount use, of cash apps. I wouldn't, use, sure. I wouldn't use several or hefty. I, I definitely sent hefty <laughs> cash apps. Uh, for sure, for sure, Jared. I love you, sometimes. You are the guest of yes. the hour right okay. here. I don't like how you get guests. What you mean? To to gang up on you me. brought him. This your man. You, yeah. <laughs> I brought you here. Hey, After right, all, this right stuff is I, right. True is true. <laughs> truth is truth. We but, will, we got to get together this week anyway. Seriously, absolutely. but let's let's let Jared close us out yeah, close and us um, out word. close out with a word. Okay. Um, I think the biggest thing is to don't be afraid to start small but have a big dream because um, mm. it doesn't matter where you really start it's just know where you're trying to go because like I said I started with a table and a tent and now I have a storefront a drive through location and a mobile trailer so if I would have you know tried to jump into that trailer first who knows where I'd be I may have been discouraged making $20 I'm like dang I'm not going to be sustainable mm. but I started off with literally I can't you can't go much lower than the table, like in the the cheap machine I had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't go much lower. So start small, um, and just build your, build yourself up because, like you said, just respect the process. You learn so much going through the process. Like um, the rights, the wrongs, stuff is gonna break. You're gonna do stuff absolutely right. You're gonna do abs- stuff absolutely wrong too. Um, and I think it's cool for people who can track your journey as well. So I, one thing I do wish is like the current customers I have that are like just now jumping on mm-hmm. i wish they could have seen the process from the beginning because they think that this is what i started with mm-hmm. i'm like nah <laughs> yeah. the table the actual table i started with is actually in the shop mm-hmm. it's wow. in the shop and it's cool it kind of gives wow. me a reminder just like yeah this is what i started with wow so um that's really it and just just keep pushing remain positive through you know whatever you guys got going on um because things do get better they get better you just got to stay consistent and uh, just remain positive through it because everybody's going through something at the end of the day. I have one question mm-hmm. for the camera. Are we going for the million next year? Yes. And I say, that with, hesi- said it. I say that with hesitation <laughs> because I would have never imagined that, let alone the six figures. Because the goal was 100,000. <laughs> and once I got past 100,000, I was like, okay, then the goal, we got past 100, we got to 150. Then we got to 200, and she's like, yeah, we got to go for uh, 250. I was like, now a quarter of a million. Like, that just sounds better right, to me. Right. Like, so we got that, and I was like, dang, so we passed that. So now, like, we just keep going yeah, up. Yeah. So, yeah, a million. A million. There a million. it is. Look, can't Man, close I'm it out excited. no better than that. Look, make sure y'all follow us all on social handles. Just enjoy the journey, okay? Share this with somebody. Yo, do me a favor. If you watch this whole thing, I need you to hit the like button, okay? Like and subscribe. Do you know that I think – uh 70% of the people who are watching this video aren't subscribed. Just subscribe and hit the like button. That really, really helps, um, especially when you get this podcast and information game for free. Okay, so thank you so much. We have it. You want to say bye to the people? Bye, people. We, we love you guys. Bye. <laughs>